Hello, my name is Jacob Lehman, and welcome to In Your Face with my co-hosts Luke, Blake, and Luke. <laughs> Our first topic is about the college football playoff. As we know, two years ago, the college football playoff um, bloomed up to four teams. Many people have complained that there's not, not that many games, and a lot of people are complaining they want eight teams. So how do you feel about this issue? I think they should expand. I don't think they should expand to like 20, 6, 25 teams, like on the top 25. But I think they should just go from four to eight. A lot of teams, like in the first year, missed out. Like a good team of TCU, a good team of Baylor, they, they did play each other, and which cost them. But I think they were they're a very good football team, very good Big 12. And as you know, the Big 12 does not have a championship, so I think that would be a, for the conference to be able to root them on. So I say yes, they should be able to do it. Luke. Well. Um, I, I've said this before, but uh, one loss is one loss too many. And Baylor and Texas Christian both had a loss. And yet it was unfortunate. I still think four is the number to go because, well, there's smaller bowls that have to go on because there's smaller schools that they depend on these bowl games. So these bowl games need airtime for big companies to sponsor them. For example, the Outback Bowl. If, if the Outback Bowl isn't on TV, why would Outback Steakhouse want to sponsor it? Because it wouldn't be on TV, they wouldn't get any public recognition. So why would they want to sponsor it? And not only that, college football is tough. And when you add more games to players' schedules, they're more likely to get hurt than if they just play four or two games to win the championship instead of four. So you're basically saying that um, you want the college football playoff to be the cream of the crop and like no loss of teams. Well, yes, and the other great teams that have one loss because there's not not every year there's going to be a team that's undefeated like yeah oh. any rebuttals please? well as you say like a lot of people say there's not enough, many upsets in college football but I think eight teams are stronger than like the eight seed in the NBA because a lot of times the eight seed skips in okay moving on to our second topic um as we know KD went to the Warriors in a dramatic fashion but what about the other players that went to their teams what player do you think will have the most impact this season on their new team? What's it with Blake? I would have to say either I would have to say either Dwight Howard coming home or Derek Rose and Joe Kim Noah going to New York. I think New York's got probably the best lineup in the East for for as a big five. As you know, Cleveland has the big three with Kyrie, Kevin, and LeBron. But they've all got an New York, they've got to probably bond and make good chemistry, but I think they've got a good lineup. According to Lee, Derek Rose, Joe Kim Noah. Porzingis and Carmelo, they're all very, very good players. So you're leaning more towards the Eastern Eastern Conference sort of powerhouses? Yes. Okay. So actually, you stole my two teams. I was going to go exactly with Dwight Howard coming home and uh, the New York Knicks because the, I'm from New York and the Knicks have a great team this yeah. year, which I'm excited for. Carmelo, Joachim Noah, and Derrick Rose. And also Dwight Howard coming home is going to make a big impact because he wants to, kind of like LeBron James, win a ring for his hometown. So that's going to make him want to play harder and faster. And hopefully with a okay Hawks team, he can lead them to victory. So you agree with Blake? Yes. Okay, so we'll move on to our third topic, which is about steroids and baseball. As we know, Barry Bonds allegedly took steroids, and he many people think that he should or shouldn't be in the uh, – Baseball Hall of Fame. Where do you stand about Barry Bonds and his Hall of Fame status? Well, as everybody knows, um, Hank Aaron is the all-time home run leader, 755 home runs, never took a steroid in his life. As People have broken the record but have taken steroids. His name is Sammy Sosa, Barry Bonds, as you just said. And I don't think they should be in the Hall of Fame because they did cheat. They did take steroids to help them get to the top, and I think that's wrong. But so you're, saying, you're saying steroids help them get to the top? I mean, it's a pill to hit to help you get stronger, basically. Okay. Right. Well, um, uh, steroids, if you know something about steroids, steroids, um, they, they help you uh, practice longer, so train harder, faster. So that still means the athletes still have to put in work, even when they take the steroids. It's not like the steroids give them huge muscles in five seconds. They need to work, and that's why I believe they should still be in the Hall of Fame, because even with the steroids, they need to work and work and work and work and work, and then they break the records, and then... But, and then their records get skewed by steroids. Well, the only thing steroids did is let them play a few extra minutes a day. Okay, we'll finish it up with Blake's rebuttals. As, well, as I said, cheating. Che do you think, if you guys remember in school, do you think cheating is right? When you cheat on the test, do you think that's right? Do you think you'd be a, go to, we get, 
or should get all A's and B's for skipping, uh, skipping class and like cheating on someone's test. Think of it that way. Do you think people like that should be put in the Hall of Fame if you think, look at it that way? But, that, but they're not cheating on tests. They, they're working hard. What they're actually <laughs> studying and trying. Oh, yeah, okay. We'll finish it up. Blake, do you have any your rebuttal to Luke's comments? Today? I'm thinking it understands what I said. Okay. Thank you for watching In Your Face. We'll see you back next week.